Shazam! Flight 209, this is Denver Flight Control. You're approaching some rough weather. Please climb to 42,000 feet. Roger, Denver. We have a visitor. Kareem! This is Captain Over, Mr. Murdoch, and Mr. Boston. This is Joey Hammond. Oh, hi, Joey. Come on up here, you can see better. Joey, we have something here for our special visitors. Would you like to have it? Thank you. Thanks a lot. So, so it's sure. he was, he, he's he's a little Lakers now, I guess, at this point, no, but sir, I guess it's like right before he cut his hair off. <laughs> you ever Because he went from a fro to naked? like balding. <laughs> you want me to check the weather, Clarence? No, she went from this fro to Uncle Phil. Mm-hmm. Joey. You ever through the same hang around the gymnasium? Yeah. We better get back now, Joey. <laughs> no, Joey can stay here for a while if he'd like. <laughs> you guys are kind of a pervert. I mean, just ask. Have you ever seen a grown man naked? Yeah, right? It's so weird. We'll report again over Lincoln. Over and out. Wait a minute. I know you. You're Kareem Abdul Jabbar. You played basketball for the Los Angeles Lakers. Very recent. I'm sorry, said son, hair. but you must have me confused with someone else. Because his, 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 his hair. Because with his hair, he, you know, I mean, was on, um, he was on a box with that hair, so. Hmm. Co-pilot. You are Kareem. I've seen you play. My dad's got season tickets. I think you should go back to your seat now, Joey. <laughs> right, Clarence? So oh, is this some meta shit? Or like, <laughs> is, he, is, he, is he just an imposter? All right, but just remember, my name is Roger Murdoch. I'm an airline pilot. I think you're the greatest, but my dad says you don't work hard enough on defense. He <laughs> says that lots of times you don't even run down court. And that you don't really try, except during the playoffs. The hell I don't. <laughs> Listen to you. I've been hearing that crap ever since I was at UCLA. I'm out there busting my buns every night. Tell your old man to drag Walton and Lanier up and down the court for 48 minutes. We have Bill Walton, big center back then. His son played in the league Joey. too, Luke Walton. You like movies about gladiators? Afterwards, I would watch till the sun came up. When it did, it was almost like like, each new day was created only for us. That's the way I've always wanted it to be, Elaine. But it won't be. Not as long as you insist on living in the past. Well, he said he's trying to change, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, you kind of look like Tom Bowman, low-key. That ain't bad. I can kind of see it. Some of the nose, some of the eyes, I guess. Not as handsome as him, but... I mean, not nah, he's not as handsome as Tom. But <laughs> why are the master cutting visa logos of the mental hospital sign? <laughs> Cause I uh, get him their bread. We got a telegram from headquarters today. Headquarters? What is it? Well, it's a big building with generals. That's not important right now. <laughs> They've cleared you of any blame for what happened on that raid. Isn't that good news? Is it? Because of my mistake. Six men didn't return from that raid. Seven. Lieutenant Zip died this morning. <laughs> but Dr. Sandler says she'll be out in a week. Isn't that wonderful? Wish I could say the same for George Zip. Be patient. Nobody expects you to get over this immediately. Hey, Stryker, how about a break? I'm getting tired. Hey, all right. Take five. <laughs> Thanks. What? I found a wonderful apartment for us. It has a brick fireplace and a cute little bedroom with mirrors on the ceiling and... Right later! Right later! I'm going down! Captain Jolene. He thinks he's a pilot still fighting the war. I found the tunnel, Johnson! It's this way! $25 for a cigarette is too much! Oh. 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 What's this world? Those are interesting sounds. Lieutenant Hurwitz. Severe shell shock. Thinks he's Ethel Merman. You'll be swell. You'll be great. You'll have the whole world. Yeah, thinks he is, huh? Yeah, Start totally. Here. Start now, honey. Everything's coming up. 
<laughs> War is hell. I'm dead. War turns into Ethel Merman. What the fuck? Excuse me, sir. I'm sorry I have to wake you. Are you a doctor? That's right. <laughs> Why is he wearing a stethoscope right now? Could you come take a look? Yes. Yes, yeah. of course. This is the first comedic of many comedic roles Lissy Nielsen would take. He used to be a dramatic actor before this movie. Oh. Really? Yeah. I think his most well known work before this would probably be Forbidden we Planet in the mm. 50s. The hell, is she a chicken? <laughs> if she's a chicken, it's coming out the wrong hole. There's no gag reflex. <laughs> So I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> so he's cause he's so funny this this making him comedic actor. Yeah. You better tell the captain we've got to land as soon as we can. This Nielsen? woman has yep. to be gotten to a hospital. As a Nielsen hospital? sound scan. What is it? It's a big uh, building. Nielsen ratings. That's not important right now. <laughs> tell the captain I must speak to him. Yeah, so similar name. I actually don't know if they're spelled the same or not. But yeah, after this, he went on to do the Naked Gun, scary movie, a whole bunch of other of these spoof movies. Running into some heavy weather, like you? superhero movie, which Glad I know you you've seen. <laughs> Not to mention, I remember. Yeah, he was the Uncle Ben type character. Yeah. Surprised you know that film. Yeah, I saw it when it was new. Did you like it? Yeah, I think it's one of the less. I think it's one of the less bad of the movie of those types of movies. The Spartans. That was worse. That was yes, definitely worse. Yes. This isn't funny! <laughs> Dr. Rumick, Mr. Hammond ate fish, and Randy said there are five more cases, and they all had fish too. Yeah, the co pilot had fish. What did the navigator have? He had fish. All right. Now we know what we're up against. Every passenger on this plane who had fish for dinner will become violently ill in the next half hour. Just how serious. Yep, he ate the fish too, because of course That's he did. Serious. Starts with a slight fever, dryness of the throat. If the virus penetrates red blood cells, the victim becomes dizzy. <laughs> this experience an itching, a rash. From there, the poison goes to work on the central nervous system, causing severe muscle spasms, <laughs> followed by the inevitable drooling. <laughs> At this point, the entire digestive system collapses, accompanied by uncontrollable flatulence, until finally the poor bastard is reduced to a quivering, wasted piece of jelly. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Great. Wait, what? <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? No idea. This movie does not give a fuck, uh, man. Automatic pilot. Uh, automatic pilot. Uh, there it is. Excuse me? <laughs> I'll go back to the passengers. Can you fly this plane and land it? Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. <laughs> Famous line. Sure you know, this is where Pilots. it comes from? Yep. Can you fly this plane and land it? Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. <laughs> Doctor, I've checked. What does that mean? Mr. Strikers. <laughs> Because surely he sounds know, like surely. Because like, well, like, really? the that that's whole from? joke with him is that he's like half smart and half really stupid. He <laughs> doesn't pick up obvious shit. What flying experience have you had? I flew single engine fighters in the Air Force, but this plane has four engines. It's an entirely different kind of flying altogether. It's, it's an, an entirely, entirely different, different kind, kind of flying. flying. Besides, I haven't touched any kind of plane in six years. Mr. Stryker. I know nothing about flying, but there's one thing I do know. You're the only one on this plane who can possibly fly it. You're the only chance we've got. The thing was was beautiful. Mm-hmm.
Looks easy. <laughs> He's still waiting in the taxi. Still. Oh my God. We need a free landing flight check. Tell him I'm in the dispatch office and I want it here fast. It's your wife. I want the kids in bed by nine. I want the dog fed, the yard watered, and the gate locked. And get milk <laughs> the milkman. No more cheese. Okay. No more cheese. Kramer. Is he have this picture of himself behind him? Did you notice that? Yeah, I know. I saw it. <laughs> now we can't do that. The risk of a flame out is too great. Well, wow, that looks so realistic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's old boy. No feet. One of the passengers is going to land that plane. Is that possible? Like, that's the light that emanates possible. in the, in the, in the one shot. driving that night. <laughs> <laughs> Know this guy. Holy you shit! Do? Who is it? He's Thanks, right over the bike. Uh, the biker. The I won't make my job any easier tonight. Ted Stryker was a crack flight leader up to a point. One of those men who, yeah, let's just say, I even try? Felt nope. too much inside. Have you made you fun of it? <laughs> and all the pieces. Went out the <laughs> yep, they're definitely having fun with it. <laughs> <laughs> Anymore. I've got to get out of here. I've got to get out oh, of here. Oh, the scene. Get it's classic. Yes, please let me handle this. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Calm down. Now get back to your seat. I'll take care of this. Calm down. Calm down. Get a hold of yourself. Do you want another phone? Everything's going to be full. I'm 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 going to be full. <laughs> Excuse me, we'd like you to have this flower. Excuse me, sir, would you? Donation to the Reverend Moon. Juice for Jesus. Read about Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> How about Buddhism? How about Jerry's kids? Oh, yeah. Scientology. Or nuclear power. <laughs> hey, Scientology was back then. Yeah. That early? Mm hmm. What? What? What's going on? We have a right to know the truth. All right, I'm going to level with you all. The most important thing now is that you remain calm. There's no reason to panic. <laughs> now it is true that no the crew members is Pinocchio. Here. Slightly. <laughs> the other two pilots are just fine. They're at the controls flying the plane, free to pursue a life of religious fulfillment. <laughs> the radio's all yours now. And keep an eye on that number three engine gauge over there. It's running a little hot. Stryker, before we start, I'd like to say something. I know that right now things... This is pretty much invented a type of humor. Basically. Yes, this is Mrs. Over. This is Ed Macias calling from the airport. There's some trouble on your husband's flight. We don't know how serious it is yet. But Steve McCroskey thought you'd want to get down. Hey, yo, way. why is the horse yes, in the I'll bed? Oh, no. <laughs> I've got to go to the airport. You can let yourself out the back door. There's juice in the refrigerator. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> what the, the fuck? fucking fuck is this movie? <laughs> it is chaos. Insanity. Yeah, just insanity. Two more minutes. Particularly miles off course. That's impossible. They're on instruments. This is gonna be a real sweat. Gunderson, let me know when you get anything. Got a cigarette, Nels? Can't take much more of this. Like I picked the wrong week to quit amphetamines. <laughs> what? Okay. Johnny, how much more coffee? No thanks. Chief, this is amphetamines. Yeah, from cigarettes to alcohol to amphetamines. Uh, half an hour and that's 45 minutes. Who's flying the plane? One of the passengers. But he's an experienced Air Force pilot, a crew during the war. So Why is Luke holding a molten ice cream cone? <laughs> what kind of plane is it? <laughs> oh, it's a big, pretty white plane with red stripes and 
curtains in the window and wheels, and it looks like a big Tylenol. OK, boys, let's get some pictures. Would you like a little whiskey, man? Certainly not. Surgeon's mental about the whiskey. This is to do a lot of coke. The oh, actual fuck. Stay in formation. Target's just ahead. Target should be clear if you go in low enough. You will have to decide. You will have to decide. You will have to decide. Stay in formation. Target's just ahead. Target should be clear if you're going low enough. You will have to decide. You will have to decide. Oh, I'm not getting the point of old Kevin Hart movie decide. so big. This is black version of this movie, Airplane. Oh, wow. So he's trying to, yeah. Oh, rats. <laughs> Essentially. What happened, Ted? What went wrong? The oil pressure. I forgot to check the oil pressure. When Kramer hears about this, the shit's gonna hit the fan. Of course. Oh, that oil temperature. What Literally. What are you doing up there? Stryker, that plane can't land itself. It takes a pilot who can handle pressure. <laughs> He's off, Rex. He hasn't flown for years. It's not his fault. Don't let shit hit the fan. Talking to Barbara Stanwyck. Big mess. Mm -hmm. break. Big mess. Gotta remember who you're dealing with. Nick, Pete, Jared, there's a fire in the bar. That's right. I can't take the pressure. I was crazy to think I could land this plane. But Ted, you don't. I don't care. I don't have what it takes. I'd be better off with someone who'd never flown before. Automatic pilot. Bad news. The fog is getting thicker. And Leon's getting larger. Is drinking problem. <laughs> you know what you're gonna say, so save your breath. No, I don't have a thing to say. You've done the best you could. You really have the best you could. You can't expect to win them all. But I want to tell you something. I kept to myself years. I was in the war myself, medical corps. On late duty one night when they brought in a badly wounded pilot from one of the raids. Could barely talk. Tempered me and Doc, he said, the odds were against us up there, but we went in anyway. I'm glad. The captain made the right decision. The pilot's name was George Zip. George Zip said that? The last thing he said to me, Doc, he said, sometime, the crew is up against it. The brakes are beating the boys. Tell them to get out there and give it all they've got. And win just one for the Zip. I don't know where I'll be then, Doc, he said. That won't smell too good, that's for sure. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me, Doc. I've got a plane to land. Damn right. All right, Stryker, you better stay up there for a bit. As soon as the fog lifts, we'll bring you in. I'll take it, Elaine. to me, Kramer. Dr. Rumack says the sick people are in critical condition and every minute counts. We've got to land now. Don't be a fool, Stryker. You know what a landing like this means you more than anybody. I'm ordering you to stay up there. 
No dice, Chicago. I'm giving the orders and we're coming in. I guess the foot's on the other hand now, isn't it, Kramer? He'll never make it, Miss Soup. Never. Not one chance in a million. I know, I know. But it's his ship now, his command. He's in charge. Boss, head man, top dog, big cheese, a head honcho. Captain! Number... Look at this! Passengers certain to die. Airline negligent. There's a sale at Penny's! All right, I'll need three men up in the tower. You, Nubar, you must see us. Me, John, big tree. Stand by, Stryker. We're going to the tower. Good luck. We're going to the tower. The tower? The tower? Rapunzel! Rapunzel! Rapunzel. Mm -hmm. Rapunzel. Stop Do calling me Shirley. How soon do we <laughs> land? Oh, it won't be long now. Try not to worry. Really? That's what they want you to keep the minds off the fact they're gonna crash. The, the planes already have it back in these little big stop trains. I don't know. I mean, I'm assuming it must be a thing to make this joke. Is there a referee? Is there a referee here? What's happening? All right, Colossimo, you work the relay. Roberts, check all air traffic within five miles. Get that finger out of your ear. You don't know where that finger's been. Dave. Got a cigarette now, sir? Uh, Linda. Husband and the others are alive, but unconscious. Just like Gerald Ford. Now, there's a chance that we can save them if Stryker can get that plane down in time. That isn't much of a chance, is it? I don't know, Linda. I don't know. But we're doing everything we can. Now, excuse me, huh? Where did you get that dress? It's awful, and those shoes and that coat. Jeez. Are they playing Atari? What the fuck is her problem? We're now at 2,000 feet, beginning our descent. Steve, I want every light you can get poured onto that field. We're getting done right now. What? Now to all emergency vehicles. Runway is Niner. Airport vehicles take positions one and two. Million equipment, number three. Air Force positions number four and five. All ambulances go to number three. Air Israel, please clear the road. Air Israel, oh my god. Oh wow. my god. Wow. Racism. <laughs> the racism. In a moment, we'll ask you to assume crash positions. Your life jackets are located under your seat. Place the jacket over your head, and when I give the word, pull the cord on the right side flat. Oh, isn't that cute? Your seat cushions are also equipped with a flotation device. Z -A -Z in Chicago, what the hell? Is it gonna crash into it? <laughs> You're way too low to the Watch ground, your dude. Strike you too erratic. It can't come straight in. Got enough fuel left for two hours of flying. I'll take it, Elaine. Listen to me, Kramer. We have people up here who will die in less than an hour, let alone two. I may bend your precious airplane, but I'll get it down. I'm putting the landing gear down now. Mr. Stryker, the passengers are ready. Thanks, Randy. You better leave, sweetheart. You might get hurt up here. <laughs> you might get hurt. You might get hurt up here. Emily gets hurt leaving. Yes. I wanted you to know. Now. This again. I'm very proud. Tell him the gear is down and we're ready to land. The gear is down and we're ready to land. All right, he's on final now. Put out all runway lights except nine. Captain, uh, maybe we ought to turn on the searchlights now. Oh. <laughs> That's just what they'll be expecting us to do. <laughs> what? <laughs> What? <laughs> makes no sense. I just want to tell you both good luck. We're all counting on you. All right, now just listen carefully. You should be able to see the runway at 300 feet. Aim a touchdown a third of the way along. Slight crossmen from the right, so be ready for it. 
Land too fast, use your emergency brakes. Red handle's right in front of you. That doesn't stop you. <laughs> Lady, get your hand off him. That doesn't stop you. Cut the four ignition switches over the co-pilot's head. You see us now? You should be able to see the field now. <laughs> Quiet out there. Yeah, too quiet. Looks like I picked the wrong week to quit sniffing blue. It's <laughs> 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 a blue <glue> sniffer. <laughs> yep, apparently. There it is. There he is. I sniffed blue before, but I don't know if I realized it. I know, I know. He knows, he knows. Below 700 now, still going down. 675, 650. He's doing his laundry in the back. What the fuck? No, no, he's down. He's down. Sound your alarm bell. It's the randomness of everything. All right, now, everybody, get in crash position. Why in the kid positions as if they've already crashed? I'm dead. I right, gotta listen to me. Remember your brakes and switches. Why are you upside down, dude? He's all over the place. 900 feet up to 1300 feet. What an asshole. More left foot. Put down more flat. Just kidding. <laughs> Right here. Your nose. Your nose. Coming in too fast. Watch your speed. <laughs> Coming in too hot. Ease up on the front. Watch for that crosswind. Level it out. Aim for the numbers. Let the dip your left wing. The drifting. Keep your eyes on the far end of the runway. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> wow. Flight He's melting. Now arriving gate 8. Gate 9. Gate 10. <laughs> Four. Push up button. He's on the ground. Yeah. But now having a break really gate sucks. 13. Yeah. Gate 14. Gate 15. <laughs> Jesus. Addy Hill, look behind me. It's a twister. It's a twister. Gate 23, 24, 25. Hey. He did it. I just want to tell you both. Good luck. We're all counting on you. <laughs> you said that twice already, dude. And he already landed. Yeah, they're done already, Leslie. What the fuck? Striker? Striker, you alright? Yeah. We're okay. Ted, that was probably the lousiest landing in the history of this airport. Some of us here, particularly me, I'd like to buy you a drink and shake your hand. And Ted, I just want you to know that when the going got rough... Okay. 
Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Thank you for flying Trans American. Loneliness. That's the bottom line. <laughs> was never happy as a child. Christmas, Ted. Lives in living hell. He's on a podcast now. Fall in the mud and get kicked in the head. An iron boot. Podcast that no one's listening to because yeah, no one's around. That never happens. I'm sorry, Ted. It's a dumb question. Skip that. Have a nice day. Municipal bonds, Ted. Talking double A rating. <laughs> Best investment in America. He's still going. They're back together. They're back together. himself as murder crazy ass fucking movie <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I mean this movie is a classic because of like I see the humor and like more modern day stuff I like oh, especially definitely. family guy and all other types of quirky kind of humor that's mm-hmm. random and out of nowhere and over the top yeah like this pretty much branded the whole generation of comedies it basically did like I can think of like a handful of stuff that's like vaguely similarish but not near no. so not anything that goes nearly as hard with yeah, it yeah this created its own lane of comedy films yeah like again, the only thing you can think of that's like anywhere close to this is like the old Monty Python stuff, but that's like different. That, even that's not entirely the same as this. This yeah. is like very cra- this like this paved the way for for generations of spoof movies, decades of spoof movies. Because right. you see this energy even the two thousands movies like fucking superhero movie Meet the Spartans and shit. Yep, an epic movie. Yeah, and all the scary movies. Scary movie. Yeah. yeah, this like, and even like yeah, this is. It's just very influential, very classic, iconic, mm-hmm. and just absolutely insane. This movie is so fucking nuts. Fucking nuts. Mm-hmm. Fucking nuts. And it's it also made Leslie Nielsen to a, a larger star. It's the reason why the, I, I, the Naked Gun movies probably would never have happened if it wasn't for him having this role. Mm, okay. Yeah. But that being said, I think that's uh, I think that <laughs> I think that's all we have to say about this movie. We were just be repeating ourselves, so please make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time for the next movie vi- movie reaction. Coming soon.